This just in, family feud between Emma Smith and some random white guy leads to an entire population not being allowed to have fun. Listen for more details on the Drunk Mormon Podcast. Oh, this is the podcast where we drink with the Mormon, strange and peculiar people they may be. Come hear the stories we were taught in our childhood. Come drink and join our eternal family. Come drink and join our eternal family. Welcome to the Drunk Mormon Podcast. Welcome back. This is the podcast where we get drunk and we talk about people who never get drunk. Which are Mormons. I'm David John Banks, and I was raised Mormon. And I'm Lauren Sackwich, and I have never been Mormon a day in my life. And we're your hosts. Yay! Each week on this podcast, we're going to teach Lauren a little bit about Mormonism. The stories from the Book of Mormon, stories from church history, interesting things that Mormons believe. And this week, we're going to teach Lauren about the Word of Wisdom. Okay. (laughs) Do you have any idea what that means? No. Great. (laughs) But first, we actually have some business this week. Okay. The first thing is, is that this podcast is live. It is live. The last episodes we recorded, the podcast wasn't out in the world yet. It was just... Sitting in our basement. Just sitting in our basement that we don't have. And uh, now it's out. Today's Mm -hmm. April 1st that we're recording this, which Mm -hmm. was the official launch day. And people have been listening to it and we've heard some feedback. It's... So far, it's positive. Mostly good. But um, we also haven't advertised in places that are a higher risk for people to send us mean things. Yeah, we wanted to start out of the gate positive. We maybe only told people who we knew would like it. We told our friends. We told all four of them. All four of our friends. And uh, so now this is real. Right. Which means you can go to iTunes, you can subscribe to our podcast, you can give it five stars. And write a nice review. Exactly. Or a funny review that doesn't really comment on how good the podcast is, but is like, makes you feel clever. Yeah, use emojis. If you write a especially cool review that we think is funny or flattering, we might read it on the air. DJB might read it in an accent. <laughs> no, wait. Well, I, I mean, know. you might as well. <laughs> if they write it in an accent, I just said, how do, how you, do you write you, it in an accent? I don't know. They it, they say they're from England or something. <laughs> um, so just put in parentheses where you're from. Uh, another bit of business is that I told my mom about the podcast. <gasps> oh my god! How did it go? Well. Because I figured it would be better if she heard about it from me. Because my mother is practicing Mormon, as far as I know, completely believing. Okay. Um, and my departure from the church is, we just haven't really talked about it. Um, so you were like, I'm going to lead this conversation with this podcast. Yeah. Well, okay. I was talking to her about other things and I was like, oh, I do have an update. I should probably let you know I'm launching a podcast on Sunday. And uh-huh. my mom was like, oh, cool. Yeah, hey, yeah. Great. I'm like, yeah, um, it's called the Drunk Mormon Podcast. Uh, so, you know, and she was very nice in, in her disapproval. Do you uh, think she'll listen to it? I hope not. <laughs> I feel like it's probably for the best that she doesn't. Okay. Because that's something that we haven't really talked about is that Mormonism is not necessarily a community that you can easily walk away from. Like, there's a lot of stigma. It's very much a black and white. You're in or you're out. Mm -hmm. If you're out, you're seen as, like, an opponent. It's one of those, you're with us or you're against us. So me doing this podcast to some people will signify that I'm against. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So, sorry, Mom. Uh, We also have a couple corrections. (laughs) I knew we got stuff wrong. So, in the first episode of the podcast, we talked about how Joseph Smith made friends and worked for a treasure hunter for a little while, digging for silver. I couldn't remember the name of the treasure hunter. His name is Josiah Stoll. Josiah Stoll is the treasure hunter. Yeah. As in, Josiah robbed. As in, S-T-O-A-L. As in, Josiah stole a bunch of shit. Well... It was probably more like a bunch of treasure. Or the formative years of a teenage boy who was impressionable. <laughs> so there's that. Josiah stole. And then the other thing is we talked about the ironic priesthood. I remember. Not the ironic I mean, not priesthood. the ironic. And I said that it was named after Aaron, who was a priest in the tabernacle. I kind of made it up. <laughs> Actually, Aaron was the brother of Moses. Okay. So, you know, Moses let my people go. Right. Leads them out of Egypt, all that stuff. I didn't even know Moses had a brother, to be honest. He had a brother. He also had a speech impediment. And his brother Aaron usually did the talking for him because he wasn't very good at talking to large groups of people. 
you know, it's sort of an example of like good brotherhood and fraternity because Moses has a stutter and Aaron's like, let me take this responsibility off your shoulders. I can talk to the people. Of course, when Moses goes up to get the Ten Commandments out of the mountain, Aaron can't control the party and their golden calf and everybody gets in trouble. So, hmm. but we still name priesthood after him. And uh, so, yeah, more corrections to follow. Feel free to write in to us at drunkmormonpodcast at gmail.com if we just got that wrong. And the last bit of business we have before we introduce our guests this week mm-hmm. is that we have a new role in the podcast. Here at Drunk Mormon Podcast, we're all about safety. We're all about fun. We're all about family. And podcasting responsibly. And Exactly. So we felt like any responsible night of drinking, we need to bring in a designated driver. And we already know her. It's our producer, Ashley. Hi, guys. I'm back. <laughs> and she's mostly going to be doing, as the designated driver, what she's been doing this whole time which is watching the clock so we don't talk for too long and redirecting us from tangents. But we're just going to acknowledge that she's here because it was beginning to be really tricky to edit around her and pretend she wasn't here. Also, we go on a lot of tangents, so she was doing she was doing the Lord's work yes. and she should be <laughs> credited as such. We believe here at Drunk Mormon Podcast that transparency is important. Mm. So we're just going to come clean and admit that we have a chaperone <laughs> every week. Thanks, guys. Whew. All that out of the way. Mm-hmm. The last thing we need to do is introduce our guest this week. Yay! Today joining us on the podcast is our good friend, Annie. Yay! Hi, Annie. Hi. Welcome to the Drunk Mormon Podcast. Glad to be here. We are also glad. So we start out um, every guest by asking them two kind of grounding questions. The first one being, where are you at with Mormonism, with your practice? That, that sounds like a yoga practice. teacher. <laughs> <laughs> where are you at with your practice, wherever you are, that's going to be okay. Pants. I know. Um, and the second one is, where are you at with alcohol? Well, as of almost two years ago, I am former Mormon. Okay. Uh, but not everyone in my family knows. Not all my friends know. I have kind of reclaimed boundaries and privacy. You know, I don't feel comfortable sharing with people who might be hurt by my personal beliefs or who might attempt to change them in some way. And so I'm just taking my time with it. I have become way more vocal about my like personal beliefs when it comes to politics or when it comes to, you know, LGBTQ rights <laughs> and stuff like that. But besides that, I mean... Honestly, people, Mormons don't typically come up to you and ask you directly, are you still affiliated with the church? Right. <laughs> so it doesn't really come up that much. I just make sure to wear relatively modest stuff around my LDS friends and family, and I try not to alienate them too much with what I say around them. So it, it's, it's, I'm basically like the same all the time. I just, you know, don't drink around them. And I don't talk about my drinking stories around them. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the podcast That's what is, is for. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, so, I mean, I am remaining anonymous just so I don't cause too much distress to my family or to those friends that I haven't told. I don't want yeah. them to feel like I don't love them. I don't want them to feel like, you know, it's just, um, I'm just building boundaries and trying to be healthy. Well, we love being healthy. Yeah. But also drinking. Oh, yeah. Isn't there another question? What is oh, yeah. What's your experience with alcohol? Oh, yeah. Um, so, I am a new drinker still. Um, I started drinking five months ago more recently than me yes yeah more recently than you Um, okay so dish dish all right so my first drink was in london (gasps) um we had (laughs) yeah we had uh toured around the city a bit went to the tower of london had a full british breakfast in the morning and in the evening we were walking down the street and we spotted the shakespeare which is just like a random pub in london and we walked in and we each had some form of beer. We weren't sure. Uh, we panicked when we ordered. Um, I, I panicked when I ordered. And instead of ordering a nice cider, which is what I wanted, I said, what do you recommend? And I think I got an IPA because mm. it tasted a little bit like piss. <laughs> and so... Um, that, that might just be beer. <laughs> that might just be beer, though. I could be wrong. Um... And yeah, so I basically had like five sips and was quickly outpaced by a very elderly man in the table next to us. 
So that was my first drink, but it was awesome. I mean, it was at a place called The Shakespeare, and it was in London. So <laughs> I say brava to me. So <laughs> yeah, really brava. Good. Thank you. brava. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Self affirmation, right? So. Yes. If we can't pat ourselves on the back, who can? <laughs> who can? <laughs> no one. Yeah. Well, um, cheers to first drinks and new drinkers. Yeah. And cheers to this podcast. Cheers. And- so I brought a cheering drink. I, I wanted to make today special because it's our, our launch. So I brought champagne. Yeah. Classic. So classy. Um, so we're going to have mimosas. Awesome. <laughs> Perfect I'm for excited. Sundays. Perfect for Sundays. Ugh. Perfect for Easter Sunday. Perfect for Mormon it's holiday Sunday. What are we gen- doing today? It's General, general conference. conference. I knew that. Which Mormon is holiday. General Conference. It's the twice a year big Mormon convention where a bunch of old men, and if you're lucky, maybe a woman, will give 15 minute talks mm-hmm. uh, about how pornography is bad mm-hmm. and about how marriage is only between a man and a woman mm-hmm. and about how. You should 100% trust the Mormon leadership more than your gut instincts. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, into that. So super, I think super fun. Mimosas pairs very well. Something sweet, something bubbly, something to help you take that all down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. It's even better than a spoonful of sugar. It's basically a spoonful of sugar, but with some alcohol. <laughs> I'm going to open it, but I'm terrible at this. Yeah. Oh, I can do it. I love oh, you can. Oh, you can. Oh, oh, our guest is going to do it. Yeah. I will really stay over here because these things freak me out. Oh, our designated driver has left the scene, so we are doing this unsupervised and not well. Have you ever seen videos of people sabering these things off? What? Yeah. What do you like saber? Saber, oh, like yeah. a giant sword. What? Yeah, you can, I guess, some... It's classy, apparently, to savor the top of these bottles. No, classy wear it, a fraternity? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) It probably won't pop. It's it's still too close to me. Ooh, this is so stressful. See, it's like, I got it. Okay. Whoa! Woo! We did it! All right, here's to a podcast that's real. Yeah! Cheers! Cheers! Let's get drunk. You're making me laugh. Stop looking at me. I'm not even looking at me. You're looking at me. Now you're making me laugh because you're looking at me. Where am I supposed to look? Everything should be. I'll just look, I'm, I'm we'll gonna, just look at each other. I'm feeling self-conscious. I'm going to hide. And I'm just feeling myself. <laughs> Dude, I told DJ B that I... He should not to edit me in burping because I want to be demure. I was Annie in our high school Wait, production Annie? of Annie, no. and the dog no. bit me during one of the shows. <laughs> what did you did you act through it? Were you a pro? No, it bit me, and I was a child. Oh. <laughs> I cried. But you can look like a hand. It is a hand, like a mitten. It is a mitten. Do you want to hear the story? And it's in two pieces. She's got a story. story. About why it's a hand? It yes. is. Yeah. So, Paul Bunyan, he's walking, and it's cold, and he has his Wait, blue sorry. Was Paul ox. Bunyan a giant? Yes. Okay. And it's winter, and he has mittens on, right? Okay. Yeah. They're walking, and mitten falls to the ground. They leave it. They abandon the mitten. The mitten becomes Michigan. The mitten from the Paul Bunyan hand because yes. Michigan. Yes. Wait, this is the first time I have ever heard the story this of the I United about. States as like droppings of Paul Bunyan. I knew what it was they true. They say about giants with big hands. They have big. Now we know where Florida came from. <laughs> Let's All do right. it. I feel like we're good to start. You're more sober than okay, I am, okay, so... Okay, okay, hold on. <laughs> Are you sober? You're not sober. He's cool I sober. could start. You no, want me to wait. start? It's time for our lesson. <laughs> and I'm going to turn the time over to me and Annie to teach it to you. <laughs> and we're going to teach you about the word of wisdom. Ooh, You're now. not sober either. It's the word of wisdom... <laughs> the word of wisdom is basically why... Mormons are not allowed to drink alcohol. <laughs> what a poignant episode. I know. Well, I had to explain it. So f- let me explain it to you. Uh-huh. 
The word of wisdom is revelation given to Joseph Smith by God.、Mm-hmm. It's like a health code. So wait, this is different than the plates. No, Not this is、plates. different. So the Book of Mormon was translated by Joseph Smith, but as he was the leader of the church, he continued to receive revelation from God. Right. And as he would receive these revelations, he eventually started to write them all down so they could be kept for posterity. Right.、Okay. And he put and all of these revelations, and then some that came to the later prophets, were bound and put into a section called the, the Doctrine, Doctrine and, and Covenants. Covenants. Ooh. So in a book, you have the Book of Mormon, and then you have this other set of mo- more modern scriptures called the Doctrine and Covenants, which、uh-huh. are revelations given to the early church. And one of these revelations is the Word of Wisdom. And the Doctrine and Covenants doesn't have chapters; it has sections. They call them sections. So section eighty-nine is the Word of Wisdom, and it prescribes how Mormons should be healthy. The the reason why Mormons don't drink alcohol, the reason why Mormons don't drink coffee, the reason why Mormons don't drink tea, basically no alcohol, no coffee, no tea, no tobacco,、uh, no tobacco. That actually is true. So let me tell you about where it is in the modern times, and then we will go back、okay. to where it all began. Okay. So in modern day, the word of wisdom basically is a rule of things we can't do. Uh huh. So it talks about like don't drink. Like alcohol is not for the belly, is what it says. But you can. <laughs> what? It's not for the belly. Tobacco is not for the belly. You shouldn't partake of hot drinks. There's also verses about things we can and should do, but those aren't re- really enforced. Eat meat sparingly. You should have fruits and vegetables in their season. So it's like, don't drink alcohol. Don't drink coffee. Don't drink tea. Those are very strictly enforced. Okay. And if you do not follow those rules, you cannot get a temple recommend and go to the temple. And you need to go to the temple to go to heaven. Except、yes. not to JB. He never went to the temple. What are you talking about? Okay, you went when you were twelve. That doesn't count. Was was that have to do with anything? Um, I went to the temple. I was like a super. Am pro I wrong woman. though? No, no, no. Your okay, so、do. why are you throwing in my face? I didn't go to the temple. Um, I, that's just just drink the juice. I'm trying to drink the juice, fam. No, good. No, you're putting、juice. alcohol in it. Just drink the yeah, juice. Yeah, because alcohol to is cool. You need a hydrate. You need a hydrate. No, 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 no. Yes. I do not. Yes. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm pretty fun. I'm fun, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So we gotta keep going. Okay. We gotta keep going. I'm、right. so sorry. So you can't、I'm、get、so、it. You can't get a temple recommend if you、no. don't follow it. Okay. And it is used as a metric to judge whether somebody is a good Mormon or a bad Mormon. Oh.、Okay. Because if you are drinking, then you are like that's v- very heavily stigmatized.、Mm-hmm. Another thing is the word of wisdom is a point of pride for Mormons because it's proof of Joseph、mm-hmm. Smith's legitimacy as a prophet. Because it is often said, this is sort of what I was taught, is that in the 1830s. We didn't have the modern understanding of these substances that we do today, so science didn't know that these were bad things to do. So Joseph Smith was able to say these were bad before science even knew it. So that's the thing too: is it's like this is proof that Mormonism is legit.、Right. And then the other thing that we know is that this revelation came. The other thing that you're taught as an active Mormon is that the revelation came because Emma Smith was frustrated with men who would spit tobacco in her home. And so Joseph prayed to God about it, and the word of wisdom was God's answer. Which, so this is what we are taught, right? But we're going to go back in time now. Yes. Okay. To eighteen thirty-three. Eighteen thirty-three. Now it's time to travel. Now here we go.、Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh, wow! We're in eighteen thirty-three, Kirtland, Ohio. Look, there's birds in the trees, trees and, and the、hay. wind is blowing. You can smell that hay. Ah,、uh, mm. Ohio, the suckiest of sucky states. Well, okay, so here we are in Kirtland, Ohio, eighteen thirty-three. It's a relatively small town, a population of maybe one thousand. And right now, this is where the main Mormon settlement is. They left Palmyra, New York, and now they are living in Kirtland, Ohio. Okay. Still led by Joseph Smith. Now, eighteen thirty-three. Three years after the church was founded in Lafayette, New York, which we talked about a few episodes ago,、yeah. right?、Mm-hmm. Here's the deal. Joseph Smith had this 
situation called the school of the prophets mm -hmm. or sometimes referred to I think as the school of elders mm -hmm. where he would teach other adult men about all of the mysteries of God and church and things because remember Joseph Smith is special because he has a direct communication oh, with God I remember and so what happened is and this is provable by multiple sources the school of the prophets would meet in a room upstairs in Joseph Smith's home uh-huh a room above the kitchen where Emma Smith would do her 1830s duties as, a, as duties, a wife. Right. So, well, the School of the Prophets would meet there and they would smoke and they would chew tobacco and when they chewed tobacco they would spit it on the floor. And then when they would leave, it was Emma's responsibility to clean it all up. And she was really frustrated. Mm -hmm. And they say that, there's a few sources that say of an account that she made a joke. And she made a joke, and the joke was, well, gee, wouldn't it be great if there was a new revelation saying the men couldn't chew tobacco anymore and I wouldn't have to clean this up? I and thought one of the other men, too. And one of the other men, to the men in the room, and one of the other men said, yeah, wouldn't it be great if there was a revelation saying that we couldn't have coffee or tea anymore? But that is fair because in the historical context, so, women mostly drink coffee and tea amongst each other. Oh, so he was like throwing it he back in He was throwing her face. shade at her because <gasps> men smoke tobacco and chew tobacco and, and drink women drink alcohol. And coffee and tea. And women drink coffee and tea. Yeah. That's why they talk about Stop. tea as so gossip. So you're insinuating that, that a whole gaggle of people are not allowed coffee the sweet, sweet nectar of the gods, and also tea, which is fine, and alcohol because of a feud between Joseph Smith's wife and some dude? Specifically Brigham Young, but yes. So here's the deal. Here's some other things to take into account during this time. A lot of people associate American resistance to alcohol to the Prohibition era of the 1920s. Yes. Uh -huh. But actually... There were movements in American culture to oppose not only alcohol, but coffee and tea as early as the 1820s. Dun, dun, dun. This was called the American Temperance Movement. In 1827, there was a group of people that called themselves the Cold Water Society that sort of formed an opposition to coffee and tea and strong drinks. You know how we have fad diets and fad ideas about what is healthy and what isn't healthy now? Mm -hmm. That's not something that just started modernly. This has been going on forever. There have always been ideas on what is and isn't healthy. In the 1800s, there was a period of time where the idea of drinking things that are too hot or too cold meant healthy and unhealthy. And this is to say that there were there were pre-existing things in America that opposed things that the word of wisdom opposes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yes. the word of wisdom opposing these things wasn't So it's not out of nowhere. It wasn't out of nowhere. It was very much like within that era. And specifically in Kirtland, Ohio, there was this group called the Kirtland Temperance Society mm -hmm. after the American Temperance Movement mm -hmm. that opposed alcohol, tea, and eating too much meat. Okay. Just, it was just their opinion about how the world should be. And the, when they started, they started in uh, with 239 members two years before the Word of Wisdom came out. They had so much power that they shut down a local distillery. A <gasps> distillery! A business! That's how much power they had. It's a lot of people, people in that area. The other thing to know is that there was a, a publication called the Journal of Health. Mm -hmm. That in 1830, which was three years before the Word of Wisdom, the same year that 1830 is also the same year that the church was founded, they published articles decrying the use of alcohol and hot drinks like coffee and tea and eating a lot of meat and tobacco. It was becoming an increasingly common opinion to avoid these substances. Right. So it's not like, it's not, well, also, I mean, doesn't the Bible be like, you can't eat, like, shellfish. Right. Or, like, wear right. polycotton but blends. Exactly. Like, and so the reason this like is worth it. mentioning is because a lot of the Mormon belief about the word of wisdom uses it as this testimony affirmation that, oh, well, this is revelation from God because no one had considered this. But, right. in fact, in 1805, there were scientific publications oh. about the health risks of using alcohol, of using tobacco, of using uh, 
Okay. Hot drinks of eating meat in excess. Yeah, because I don't know if we well, mentioned it was this already. But Joseph Smith was a smart man. He was paying attention to what was happening around him. And he was like, hey, you know, some of these things might have merit. Let's talk about them. Okay, so then where does it become like crazy? Like line in the sand. Okay, this so is here's the thing. Going. 1833 was when the word of wisdom was officially given, and initially it was given as a commandment. At and, first, it was a commandment, and, but that lasted maybe a week. Joseph Smith did try to kind of make this a commandment, and then the moment he met opposition, he slid back. Is because he realized there was resistance to this. But here's the thing, though. This is my favorite part. Joseph Smith actually, at one point, set up a bar in his house. Like, in his house, he set up a bar. And the church owned breweries and vineyards. (gasps) Through through the eight, like, through all the 1800s. Brigham Young, who was the prophet after Joseph Smith, was an avid brewer. He had his own breweries in Utah. Like, he's, like, brewing shit up left and right. He's and like, hey, he man. He made his own whiskey, and he said his was okay because it was, quote, sanctified. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's a monopoly. Exactly. That's a monopoly That right is there. actually my opinion. I think he was using his power as prophet to be able to force people to choose to buy his personal whiskey over any other brand. You guys can talk about some other time. Brigham Young, he at one point was like, hey guys, we should have a steamboat in Salt Lake Lake. And everyone's like, why would we do that? And he's like, I don't know, I just like them. So guess what he bought? A steamboat! Because he was wealthy. Hey guys, let's stay on topic. I know it's hard. Let's go back. Okay, so he has his own brewery. He does. So what happens then? Why does it all of a sudden become... Dude, let well, me tell you about this. Well, in 1851, this. Yep. which is almost 20 years later, Brigham Young, at a conference of the church, similar to the general conference that happened today when we're today? recording this, mm-hmm. he made, by vote, which basically means, does everyone agree with me? And everyone says yes, because why? you can't say no. He's, he's basically... Basically, the tyrant of Utah. And he's basically, quote unquote, speaking for God. So you're not uh-huh. going to disagree with God. I can talk about him like that because he is the namesake of my universe. I just really like the tyrant of Utah. I feel like it's a really good name. He's legitimately the tyrant of Utah. It's a great Utah. band name. This t shirt off. Continue. I want to wear that shirt. So in shirt. 1851, Brigham Young put to a vote to the conference uh-huh. to make the word of wisdom an official commandment. And it was approved. So that, that made it an official commandment. But even then, if you disobeyed it, your eternal salvation wasn't threatened. You seem like nobody is benefiting from this. But yeah. here's another thing we haven't talked about yet. Hebrew J. Grant, man. Another prophet of the church later on. Seventh prophet. prophet. We're traveling through Hebrew time J. again. It's, it's the 1920s. But Hebrew J. Grant is like, my dad was an alcoholic. I do not partake. I want no one to partake. You guys shall not drink alcohol. And then they, like, decide. Because by this time, the presidency of the church has, like, a ton of power. And it doesn't matter what everyone says. The whole church doesn't have a vote vote anymore. The presidency of the church, the ruling power of the church, is like, Fuck you guys. We've decided we're going to have the second declaration, or third or something. I don't know. I can't remember. They don't drink no more. What that meant is that now, if you disobeyed the word of wisdom, you weren't eligible to go to the temple. Mm -hmm. And if you can't go to the temple... You can't go to the highest region of heaven. Yep. You can't chill with God. Amen. See, I... I know that. I can go to heaven. DJB cannot. Right. This isn't a contest. I am so sorry. This so is what are we funny. talking about now? And so now, from there, through mm-hmm. modern day, the word of wisdom was has been very strictly enforced. And mm-hmm. again, selectively. Because Mormons are not allowed to drink alcohol, coffee, or tea. They're not allowed to smoke tobacco. And yet, Utah and Mormonism have incredibly high rates of obesity. Ooh, they have incredibly with- high rates of abuse of opiate prescription medication. Uh-huh. And they have high rates of lots of other uh, addictions. Yeah, but they're not doing those other three. <laughs> right, but the whole point of it Heroin. is it was supposed to help them be healthy. And they're not oh, a healthy Oh, I see. They're not healthy. And as we just discussed, a lot of the, the ideological foundation of 
the word of wisdom being so strictly enforced and a lot of the cultural assumptions of the legitimacy of the word of wisdom as revelation is actually disproven by a ton of redundancy in American culture at the time. So these very strictly enforced rules are basically based on nothing. Nothing. Well, it's... Oh, oh, God. I didn't drink alcohol for 28 years of my life. For no reason. For no reason other than someone would be upset if I did it. Well, here's the thing. My whole testimony for a long time was based off of these scriptures. Like, I have a condition called vasovagal syncope, Mm -hmm. which is where basically if I exercise too much, I pass out. Okay. And so within these scriptures that I've said, like the word of wisdom scriptures, they actually say you will walk and not be weary and run and not faint. Oh, so it was like it was legit straight up you. It was literally like me. Like when I was in high school, I ran cross country. Mm-hmm. And like cross country was a huge part of my life. My mom ran cross country. And so for me to have this condition where I passed out when I ran was a huge trial because I was doing my whole family like a wrong in my eyes because I was a teenager. Mm-hmm. Teenagers are idiots. And so a lot of my testimonies when I was a super Mormon was... Uh, based around this idea that... Wait, what are testimonies? A testimony is basically your personal statement of belief. Mm-hmm. So it's Like you have to say it out loud to people? You, mm-hmm. it, you're encouraged to express it to you. You'll say, I have a testimony of, and then you say the things you believe. I have a testimony that Jesus Christ is our Savior, and that God is our Father, and that Joseph Smith is a true prophet, and I have a testimony that the Book of Mormon is true, and I have a testimony... I have a testimony that... I did not want to sleep on a gravel site at Coachella. (laughs) Drinking alcohol is fun. And I think I'm a pretty decent person when I want to be. I think you're a decent person. Thank you. Thank you. And who we just met. And then when you're done with your testimony, you say, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. In the name of Jesus Christ and Brigham Young, amen. Amen. But a testimony is a very important part of growing up in the church. And part Mm. of my testimony was this scripture, which Got was um, the whole idea of walking and not be weary. Because my condition caused me to have issues walking upstairs without passing out. Mm-hmm. Like, I would literally walk upstairs and pass out at school. And you have to deal with that. And you don't you don't have necessarily the tools to deal with it because you're a teenager. And so what do you turn to? You turn towards your religion, which has a specific scripture that you think is applicable exactly to you. Like, it is mm-hmm. talking to you. And so that's what I did. And so a lot of time when I needed to bear a testimony, the one thing I would always say was I would say the scripture that was Doctrine and Covenants 89, 18 through 21, where I would say, and you will walk and not be weary and run and not faint. And so when I slowly came to terms with like Mormonism wasn't actually perfect and wasn't good for me, the very last thing I did was drink because like my idea of who I was was tied intrinsically to the scripture. Like, I truly believed this stuff. I truly believed that, like, if I believed in God, and if I prayed hard enough, I wouldn't pass out when I ran a cross-country race, or when I walked upstairs in college. Our listeners want to get to the activity now, so let's go ahead and move on to there. Okay. I love the activity. Okay, activity, activity. Can I play it? Yes. yes. So we have an activity every episode, and yes. this week our game is called <gasps> Mother May I. <laughs> shit, man. And this is actually a game for Annie. Oh, I'm so excited. We have this jar, and it's filled with strips of paper, mm-hmm. and each one has a different thing written on it. <laughs> And Lauren is going to draw them out. She's going to take turns drawing them out one at a time and read them aloud, starting each one with Mother Mother May May I. I. And then Annie has to correctly guide her according to the word of wisdom. Shit. And if the answer is yes, then she says, yes, you may. And if the answer is no, then Annie has to provide an alternative. Oh, I love this. Okay. I apologize to my seminary teacher father if I get anything wrong. Mother, may I shoot heroin? (laughs) You may slash may not, because if you consider that an herb, you could maybe say yes, because it is a pain relievant. But you could say no. Wait, I can do heroin in this religion? 
You could is that real? Say no. Because, you got to be definitive. Hold on. Hold the whole on. point is this no activity. Specific. There's no you specific. There's no specific about definitive. heroin. Yeah. There's no yeah. specific about it's heroin. It's either yes or a no. You, okay. you make a choice. Within make a choice. Mo- okay. Okay. Within the modern church pe- teachings, I would say no, because in the modern church, it's like basically any drug is a no. Oh well. It, any illegal drug. Any le- illegal drug is a no. However, in the ancient church, they were like all about herbs. What do you mean by ancient? In the ancient, I mean the 1800s church. Okay, in the ancient 1800s. <laughs> Not that ancient. Okay. Mother, may I have Mountain Dew? Yeah, it's terrible for you, but sure, it's not against the word of wisdom. I mean, it could technically be. It used but. to be frowned on because of caffeine, but then caffeine was sh- was eventually So I can clarified. have caffeine, but not coffee. It was taught for a while that caffeine was why we couldn't have coffee and tea. People speculated because mm-hmm. it seems so specific. Choice. And they didn't know why we couldn't right. have those, but we could have other things. Here. And then the church uh, came out in 2000 and... Nine? Ten? No, it was like 2012. I think it was 2012 saying, you're allowed to have caffeine. That's not why yeah. it's bad. Mother, may I have coffee-flavored ice cream? Oh, hell no in my family. Hell no in my family. What? Hell no. Because it's made with coffee? We don't even call it the coffee table, baby. We call it a small table or a lower table. We Is actually that true? don't say that. We just we do call it a coffee table, but some Mormons don't. They avoid the term coffee. The other name for a coffee table is a cocktail table, but that would be worse. That's all. That is worse. What did you guys call it? We just we called just it the called living it room table. table. We just called it a table. Uh-oh. We avoided the term coffee. <laughs> Mother, may I use tobacco on infected wounds as I an mean, ointment or poultice? Yes. That is How actually, is that different from coffee ice cream? That is because for the external the use word of your body. It specifically says tobacco is not for the belly, but can be used for the body. Oh, you're right. Not for the belly. I thought that was funny when she said it, but now I see that loophole. It is a loophole. It was meant for poultices. Specifically, actually. Well, can I use alcohol as a disinfectant? Yes, because that is for the external use but of your body. But you didn't say, mother, not, may I? No! No! It's not for the belly. <laughs> not for the belly. I <laughs> just like that phrase. Wait, we didn't talk about this. Mother, may I use vanilla extract while baking? Ooh, that is actually something that people do. I, we didn't talk about this. Okay, so pure vanilla extract actually does have alcohol in it, and a lot of Mormons are not for that. But um, whoa, whoa, whoa. the fake uh, uh, vanilla extract, what is that called? Artificial vanilla extract people are cool with because How it does do not Mormons have alcohol in it. How do feel about kombucha? Oh, because that's that healthy. That is an actual controversy in Utah. They have to say the alcoholic content of kombucha now because of Utah. Are you serious? I'm serious. But that's good for your colon. Is it though? It's Mormons good for your belly. So. It has alcohol in it. Mother, may I have meat be the focus of every meal? No way, Jose, not according to the word of the law. But however, in modern Mormonism, sure thing. You can have meat all the time. What? The Mormons are cool with that. Modern Mor- the word of it. But in more modern Mormonism, they do not care about how much meat you eat. Mother, may I have herbal tea? Yes. I knew that one. If yeah. it's herbal. Yeah, as long herbal. as it's herbal. So you can have a hot drink if it's herbal tea. However, I have to say, I had to convince my parents Ooh. to let me drink that. Oh, here's a good one. Go Mother, it. may I have hot chocolate? Yeah. Oh. All the days of your life. I had it every morning for seminary, before seminary. Okay, this one. That's the last one. So that's our game. That's our game. And the last thing I wanted to share of our lesson is just some basic facts from modern science which is that red wine has been scientifically connected to helping you lose weight uh. improving your men- memory what? and improving women's libido Ooh. coffee has also been connected with weight loss and improving your performance and preventative against dementia and alzheimer's <gasps> oh i'm gonna be and a tea all day. has also been attributed to weight loss, listen Utah, and helps protect your bones and reduces oh. your risk of heart attack and stroke. And in our show notes on our website, we'll put some links to some articles. Yeah! Anyway, that's our lesson this week. Great lesson. I want to thank Annie for joining us today and hey. helping teach about the word wisdom. Thank um, you. And thank you, Lauren, for another good podcast. As always. And thank you to our listeners. 
for coming back. Yeah, thank you guys. Thanks guys. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter at Drunk Mormon Pod, short for podcast. Mm-hmm. And we're on Facebook.com slash Drunk Mormon Podcast. Seriously, follow us. Write to us. We want to hear from you. We want to know that you're there. And if you have any questions or if we got something wrong, you can also write into our email at drunkmormonpodcast at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. And there's a link to that on our Instagram, too. Great. And because we're still a brand new podcast, please be a good missionary for us and spread the word. Share our podcast with someone who you think would appreciate it. Mm-hmm. And give us a review on iTunes because that helps us stay on iTunes radar as well. Well, I'm David John Banks. And I'm Lauren Sackridge. And I guess I'm Annie. And now we bid into all farewell. Bye. In the name of Brigham Young's illegal dispensary. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>